Oshkosh 2023 here at the Murphy Aircraft booth. We have Kenny with Turbine Motor Conversions. And Kenny, tell me a little bit about what you do. All right, well, what we've done is something pretty crazy. We decided to put a PT6-20 on the Murphy Moose, which is one of my favorite airplanes for flying around the backcountry because of its load hauling capability and how big it is. Uh, and because it flies great uh, like a beaver, but how many how many fire breathing horsepower is uh, PT6? So this PT6 is 550 shaft horsepower, which we're getting uh, 2,500 pounds of thrust at the propeller, which is incredible. It's an absolute amazing takeoff experience. It just feels like you're in a dragster when you let it go. Awesome, awesome. Well, how how long have you been doing this now? So I've been a crop duster for 30 years. I've been sitting behind PT6s like this for uh, about 17,000 hours. And, you know, it's just such a great, incredibly reliable power plant, very low maintenance. And we run them in one of the harshest environments there are for flying. Okay. And you decided to throw this into a Murphy about when during this? Actually, last fall. And and believe it or not, it was my wife that said, you have to do this. She wasn't comfortable sitting behind the, that radial engine that we had on this thing. It would give us trouble once in a while, and it made her nervous. And she's like, I've done with this thing. Put that turbine on. You've been wanting to do it. Just do it. So we went and did it. I hired uh, Cascade Aircraft, which I have been a test pilot for for 15 years. They specialize in turbine conversions, and, you know, I have a great re working relationship with them. So we formed this partnership to put this great product together. Well, you have taken kind of a unique approach to experimenting where a lot of times I see like a new engine or automotive conversion or whatnot and a airframe, either known or a new airframe to try to make together. You've taken something already proven in both fields and, and made them together. That's right. Yeah. And we, we wanted this installation to look like it belongs on this airplane. We spent an awful lot of time on the design aspect of it and getting everything right, getting the engine angle right, get, making sure it's going to fly really good. We're not going to run out of rudder with all that thrust. And I actually need less rudder with this engine and this setup than I needed with the M14 on here. So we hit that mark. Um, so many times you see turbine conversions where they've pulled the, the front end off a of King Air and they just try to cobble it and make it work. And I didn't want that. I wanted this to look like it belongs on the moose. So being that it has so much power and so much thrust, how did you overcome that by not having to change any control surfaces yes. or, or static stability surfaces? Right. Well, we used our aeronautical engineers that are on staff that have done this many times with all their spray planes. And they know how to find the right thrust angles for the engine. So we offset the engine both down and, and also two degrees to the right. That's something that, uh, I say, if you're new to aviation or home building that you don't think is a thing, you think like initially I did, you just squarely bolt up an engine to a firewall and there you go. No, there is all kinds of twist it this way, point it down, or whichever way to overcome these, these things. There's a lot of math involved. <laughs> so that's why I left that to the engineers because that's not my specialty. All right, so run through the performance numbers real quick on this particular airframe of what you've seen so far. So, proven numbers, my ag airstrip is at uh, 2,500 feet, when it's typically we have a 4,000 foot density altitude. So the day we did all the testing, uh, we were getting off the ground in 150 feet at 4,000 foot density altitude. I don't know what it's going to do at sea level yet. Um, and then I loaded four big 200 pound guys in there and a bunch of stuff in the back to get it at gross weight and try to get the CG as far aft as we could to see what it's going to do with that kind of a load on it. And we got off in 320 feet. That's, that's incredible. Either way, it's incredible. I mean, yeah. just you by yourself, the airplane doesn't even know you're there basically. No. And that's the beautiful thing about this airframe anyway and this wing. It just doesn't care if it's got a load on it or not. It flies so good. All right, let's talk about, is, is this available as a kit or you do the entire modification yourself? Like, could I order a kit and do this myself or do I need to bring it to you or order an airframe and have you guys do all the work? Right, well, you know, everybody looks at a turbine engine conversion type thing and they look at it and they go, oh man, it's super expensive, I'll never be able to afford that. And we've tried to make this affordable, that was my goal. We're getting mid-time dash 20s that still have plenty of time left for guys like you and me that aren't going to fly thousands of hours on this thing. And we were able to do the firewall forward kit with a propeller for $250,000. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. 
AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. And then the price of uh, one of these kits, I think uh, I heard they're around the 60 range, 60 to 80 range. $65,000 for a moose right now. Um, they're expecting that price to go up a little bit. They're going to revamp the kit, make it more user friendly. But right now they have them available for $65,000. And, you know, if you want us to do the whole thing, we've got a customer right now. We're putting the turbine engine on the front. He found an airframe. We're, doing, we're painting it. We're putting a G3X avionics sweet in it we're because we have a paint shop and uh, we're doing the interior so the, so the package is customizable that's very customizable to whatever you want to do all right so back to the engine for those of us not familiar with a pt6 uh what kind of fuel burn do you look on takeoff which always gonna be momentarily and then in right. cruise yeah so takeoff you know uh it's around 50 gallons an hour Yikes! But you know, even a Lycoming burns a lot at full power. The M14 was burning uh, about 39 gallons an hour on takeoff. Uh, our crews were getting 25 gallons an hour up high and 30 gallons an hour down low. And we're indicating 160 miles an hour indicated at 12,500 feet or down low. You could exceed red line with it. We're doing that at 50% power. So you do have to be careful when you fly this thing. You can't overspeed it, you, you know, you just, you gotta be careful. So in this configuration, are you on right rudder or left rudder? Yeah, we're on right rudder, opposite of the M14, but it doesn't take a lot of rudder. And the thing that I was so impressed with when I did the first test flight, because I've done a whole bunch of them, we usually have some kind of problem to fix. We got a heavy wing or it's yawn too much right, left, whatever. This thing was hands off flying on the first flight. I couldn't believe it. You do need some rudder on that max power takeoff, but once you level out and you get into a uh, cruise climb, which is about 120 indicated, you don't need any rudder at all. You can trim it up and just literally fly it hands off in the climb. Have you done any really hard testing? Can this thing nearly climb off the prop? Yeah, so one of my buddies <laughs> says, well, hold my beer. He goes, what does it climb at at VX? What is that like? I said, well, I can show you. So I, you know, I slowed it down and, and started adding power and I was trying to get it down to VX, which is 80 miles an hour. Yeah. And that nose got so steep, he surrendered. He goes, no, that's steep enough. And we were doing about 85. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, that's good. Level it out. So nearly helicopter status. Yeah, it's almost scary. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for the quick tour through this today. Um, where can everybody find you online, call you to see about doing one of their con these conversions? Oh, lastly, you've set this up for the Murphy. Do you have this, any future plans to set up on other airframes in the future? So we are looking at some other airframes. I've had folks from uh, Bearhawk call me and go, hey, can we do this on a Bearhawk? We're looking into that. Okay. I'm not sure right now there's any other airframes that are big enough in the experimental market, though, to to handle the Dash 20, but the Bearhawk's definitely a candidate. That would be awesome to see. Well, again, thanks for the, the tour through here. Um, let's get your uh, contact information and where to follow you on social. I assume you're posting on social, being that you're doing such cool stuff. Yeah, we're on Facebook, uh, you know, TMCX, and uh, we're also on Instagram, we're on YouTube. We don't have a website up and running yet, but we're working on it. So we just got this thing flying June 1st, and uh, I just couldn't be happier with it.